This video is going to introduce you to everyday physics and explain what you can expect from the course so that you know how to do well in it. Hello and welcome to Everyday Physics. I'm Elizabeth Angstman and I'm the lecturer for this course. I'm also the first year director here in the School of Physics. So I'm hoping that after studying this course, you'll never look at the world the same way again. I'm hoping that you'll look at things around you, such as streetlights, and go, oh, I know how that works now. That's the aim of this course. This course doesn't have any formal prerequisites. There's no university level courses that you need to have done to understand this course. However, it does have some maths in it. It's a non-calculus course, so there is no calculus. If there ever is calculus, then it's always optional. But you do need to know a little bit about algebra. You need to be able to rearrange equations. Trigonometry, so it, we do right angle triangles, so you'll need to know a bit about soccer toa. And there's a little bit of geometry that you need to know as well, such as the equation for a straight line. So where this comes up during the course, in case you're a bit rusty on it, there's links to the Khan Academy and other resources that you can use to revise this maths. But physics is a quantitative science, so it's impossible to do physics properly without any maths. So during this course, we're going to cover 12 topics, one each week. In each topic, we're going to look at some everyday object or phenomena, such as street lights, hot air balloons, and speed cameras, and we're going to look at the physics behind them. So, for example, street lights are the first item that we're going to be looking at, and when we're considering street lights, we're going to be looking at electric current, at electric power, and you'll be also be introduced to the photoelectric effect, which is how the street light knows when to turn on. And the photoelectric e effect is very exciting because it was some of the first evidence of quantum mechanics. So for each of these topics, you're going to have video lectures, so there'll be about five to seven videos for you to watch. And these videos all cover the theory, so you'll see some equations, etc. They're going to have worked examples in them, and then there's going to be demonstrations. Each topic also has approximately 10 tutorial problems for you to try. Now, it's really important that you try these tutorial problems because there's lots of evidence that shows that the best way to learn physics, in fact, the best way to learn anything, is to practice answering questions. So with these tutorial problems, have a go at them. There's then videos showing the worked solutions of all these problems. So once you've had a go, you'll know if you got the answer correct. If you struggled with it, you can then watch the solution video. But please try the problem yourself first. Now, because this course is online, it's really important that you're self-motivated. Nobody is going to be checking if you have done those tutorial problems or not. You'll be the only one who's aware of that. But if you don't do them, then you're going to struggle with this course and you're not going to get as much out of it as if you did do them. Now, physics is an experimental science as well as being quantitative. So this means that everything is based on experiments and evidence. So it's really important when I tell you something, don't trust me. Check it out yourself. So throughout the lectures, we suggest little things that you can do at home to check that what I'm telling you is actually the case. Now, also because physics is an experimental science, there's going to be six investigations for you to conduct at home. So there's going to be one investigation due every fortnight. So these investigations are designed to use equipment which hopefully you have access to at home. So for example, the first investigation, you're going to be measuring the specific heat of water with a kettle. So in order to perform this, you need a kettle, a measuring jug, a stopwatch, so most um, phones or iPads have a stopwatch app on them, and a thermometer is optional. Now, if you're ever in the situation where you don't have access to the equipment, such as some people don't have scales at home to measure mass, 
you can borrow these on a 24-hour loan from the first year lab. So you can't conduct the experiment in the lab, but you can borrow the equipment. So if you need to borrow some equipment, just go to the first year physics lab in the old main building, talk to the lab staff at the hatch of the, at the front of the lab, explain that you're doing everyday physics, and they'll give you a book to sign and the equipment that you need. This is on 24 hour loan because we've got limited sets of the equipment and it's possible that somebody else will need it as well. So please don't leave it to the last minute if you need to borrow the equipment because chances are that somebody else might have done that too and you might not be able to borrow the equipment at that time. So each of these investigations counts 5% towards your total mark for the subject and as we've said they're due fortnightly, there's six of them giving you a total of 30%. So you will be submitting your reports through Turnitin. Please submit your reports as a PDF so that they appear to your tutor the same way that they appear to you. If you submit them as a Word document, we've had some issues with arrows moving etc. But if you submit it as a PDF, you can be assured that your tutor sees what you see. So submit it to turn it in, make, have a look at the report once you've submitted it to confirm that you have submitted the correct report. Your tutor will then use a rubric and put comments throughout your report before you get it back. Your tutor will also make, give some overall general feedback in your group discussion forum about how your group went on the report and the common mistakes. So it's a really good idea to look at the feedback from your tutor before submitting the next investigation so that you're not constantly making the same mistakes. So that's 30% of the assessment for the course, the investigations that you do at home. You also have a online test every three weeks. So this tests out the theory. So each of these tests, there's four of them, is worth 10%. Now be warned, these tests are hard. Don't leave it till the last minute. They're hard for a couple of reasons. They're open book, which means you can use whatever resources you have available for help, apart from other people. It should be done individually. And there is no final exam for this subject. So this means that we use these quizzes to distinguish between HD, D, credit and pass students. So just be warned, they are hard and they have to be hard. If they weren't hard, then we would have to scale this subject down, which nobody wants. So the final part of the assessment is really the most exciting part. You have to come up with a final report. So in this final report, you're going to look at the physics behind an everyday object or phenomena of interest to you. So if you're interested in sport, you might choose something sporty, like how, why do they refrigerate tennis balls before big matches in big tennis matches? You could look at the difference in bounce height of cold tennis balls versus hot tennis balls, for example. Or if you're interested in music, you might want to look at how different musical instruments work. So it's really up to you what you want to do. What you're going to need to do is come up with an investigation, so similar to the investigations that you've been doing through the course, but one that you come up with to test the physics behind that object or phenomenon. So you're going to be handing in a draft of this report through the workshop tool on Moodle, and make sure that you do that by the due time. You'll then have a week to give feedback to five of your peers in the course about their draft report. And you will actually be marked on the quality of the feedback you give your peers. Your peers. So that will be 10% of your mark. So you'll want to look at their reports carefully and give them as useful a feedback as you can. And then once that's happened, you'll be able to see the feedback that your peers have given you and you will be able to use that to improve your final report before submitting it the final time to be marked by the tutor. So the final report mark, you get 20% of your final grade from that and 10% from the quality of the feedback that you give to your peers. 
but you won't be able to give feedback to your peers if you haven't submitted a draft report because this is a peer activity and it's not fair for you to see other people's reports if you're not letting them see your report. So now the work expectations with this course, even though it's online, are the same as other first year physics courses. So in this course we cover the same physics as what's covered in our Fundamentals of Physics course, Phys 1111. However, here we do it in a slightly different manner because it's an online course. So in Phys 1111, they have six contact hours a week. So three hours of lecture, two hours of lab, and one hour of tutorial, which is six hours. And we recommend that they also spend six hours at, of their own time working on the subject material. So that's 12 hours a week. So we recommend that you set aside 12 hours a week throughout the 12 weeks that the course runs to complete this course. This course doesn't have a final exam, so you don't need to devote any time in the exam period towards it. So even though it's online, it does have fairly high expectations. The course has a physics code, it's Phys 1110. So this means something. You can elect to do it as a general education subject, but it is a physics course. And so the level of work expected is the same as other first year physics courses. So if that's more time than you want to spend, then I recommend that you maybe drop this course and look for another course to do. Now for each topic, you're going to have some readings underneath the video lectures. These are optional, they're just that some people prefer to read the information than watch the information. They're, so the readings come from the library and if you want some additional problems to try, then there's often some additional problems in the readings at, which you can link to from below the video lectures. Now beware of the late penalties in this course, they are quite steep. That's because we need to get your mark. What, your work marked and back to you before the next lot of work's due so that um, you can use the feedback from your tutors so that you're not making the same mistakes again and again. So it's not possible to get an extension for the online quizzes at all. The reason for that is that the answers are released as soon as the quiz closes and the next day you'll get access to a solution video showing you how to do all these problems. So it's not possible to get an extension on the online quizzes. For the investigations, there's a late penalty of 25% per day. So be careful not to submit those late. With the draft report that you submit for peer feedback, it's also impossible to submit this late. It's because of the nature of the workshop tool that we use. As soon as that due time has passed, it assigns reports to people who've submitted reports. And if you haven't submitted anything, you won't be assigned anything to mark, and so you will miss out on 10% of the marks. So don't submit the draft report late. And again, with the final report, there's a 25% penalty like the investigation. So don't submit anything late. I recommend that you print out the course outline now and stick the page with all the due dates and times on your wall. Everything's due at 9 p.m. And finally, plagiarism can be a bit of an issue. Please make sure that you don't plagiarize because it's not good for you, it's not good for me. So plagiarism involves submitting somebody else's work as your own, submitting your own work for two different assignments. So for example, if you submit one of the investigations as your final report, that is plagiarism because you're only allowed to submit each piece of work for one assignment. So please be careful not to plagiarize. You can have a look at the Turnitin report to see what your similarity percentage is if you're worried about plagiarism. So it's probably a good idea to have to start thinking about what topic you'd be interested in for the final report now. You don't need to come up with something instantly, but just keep it in the back of your mind. Oh, that looks interesting. Maybe I could think about that. So I really hope that you enjoy this course. It's quite a challenging course and I really hope that after doing this course you do see the world in a different way and you have a better understanding of how it all works.